want to see a move of God. We want God to be Lord of Cleveland. We want to see our generation awaken. We want religion to bow and for revival to come. Come on, can we agree in this house? God, we want religion to bow and revival to come. We won't settle for religion. We aren't satisfied with the routine. We aren't satisfied with striving. Holy Spirit, help us and stir us up and give us deeper hunger for revival. We won't stop contending until we see the name of Jesus lifted in this city, in this region, in this nation. We will be the intercessors. We will stand in the gap. We will stand in the gap. We won't settle. We won't stop. We won't settle. Come on, get, get, get unsettled in this place. We refuse to be comforted. We refuse to fall asleep. We refuse. We want to see God. We want to see his kingdom come. May this be a house that holds the presence of God. May this be a house that holds the glory of God. We won't stop until we see it. We won't stop until we see it. Come on and get unsettled in this place. Oh, Jesus, we've come to see you. We've come to hear you. We want to know more. We want to hear more. You are, you are our bridegroom, and we've come to see you. We're anticipating seeing you. We're anticipating your presence. We come in with thanksgiving. We thank you for what you've done this morning, and we thank you for what you're about to do tonight. Come on, can you put your hands together? Come on, just celebrate God. Celebrate God. We thank you that you're about to move like we've never seen you move. You're about to speak like we've never heard you speak. You're about to move like we've never seen you move. Oh, we stir ourselves up in our holy faith. Oh, we abandon ourselves and we look towards Jesus. Oh, we cast aside every weight and we look towards Jesus. You're the author and the finisher. What you started, you're going to complete it tonight. What you spoke this morning, we're going to see the completion tonight. Come on and agree with that. What we, what we heard this morning, we're going to see the completion tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. What we heard this morning, we'll see the completion tonight. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, he that begun a good work is faithful to complete it. He's going to do it. He is faithful that promise. Everything we've heard, we're going to see the manifestation tonight. Come on and intercede. More than our needs, we pray for those that are lost. More than our needs, we pray for those that don't know you. God, will you stretch forth your hand and lift up the burdens of the heavy? Will you stretch forth your hand and heal the brokenhearted? Will you stretch forth your hand and deliver the bound tonight? More than our needs, we intercede for Cleveland. We declare that this ground will be fertile. We declare that this ground, this ground belongs to the Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, if you're in this room, can you all just lift your hands up to the Lord? Come on, let's begin to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to take us to a new level tonight. Come on, we want to climb Mount God. This morning was great, but we want to go higher tonight. We say, Holy Spirit, take us higher. We say we see a door open in heaven, and we hear a voice that says, come up here, and we respond. I pray tonight that we would be a responsive people, that we would be a people to respond to the call to come up here, to come up higher. So come on right now, begin to lift up your praise and take it to the next level. Begin to take your praise up higher. We worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We exalt the man of sorrows, the one who bore our sin, who bore our shame, who healed us of all of our diseases. We worship that man. We worship that King. He's worthy tonight. He's worthy tonight. He's great and greatly to be praised. He's great and greatly to be praised. We ask for signs, wonders, miracles. We thank you that in your presence, 
changes in your presence. Bodies are healed. Lives are changed. The captive is set free. Come on and begin to pray out tonight. Begin to cry out tonight. Oh, we ask that you would come in a new way, in a new level. Send a fresh rain tonight of your presence. Send a fresh rain tonight of your presence. Oh, pour yourself out tonight. Pour yourself out on the hungry. Pour yourself out on the thirsty. We say we're desperate and we're desperately seeking. Come on, every hand lifted in this house. Come on out of your mouth. Begin to release the kingdom of God. We release righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We release healing. We release deliverance. We release salvation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I want you to take your expectation wherever it is. And I want you to go higher tonight. I want you to go higher tonight. Lift up a shout of desperation out of your belly. How desperate are you? How hungry are you? Oh, oh. We have come to see the Lord. We have come to see the Lord. We didn't come for a name, for a face, for a platform. We came to see the Lord. We've come to see the Lord. Come on, begin to cry out tonight. Begin to cry out tonight. Lift your voice. Hey, come on, if you don't know what to pray. Just begin to lift up worship to the only one worthy, to the only one worthy. Come on, he's the sign, he's the wonder, he's the miracle, he's the sign, he's the wonder, he's the miracle. Come on, lift up your voice in this house. He's the sign, he's the wonder. He's a miracle. Lift him up tonight. Lift him up tonight. Lift up a high praise out of your mouth. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you for what you're going to do tonight, God. And we ask that you come in and that you have your way, Jesus. I thank you that this church will be like the church of Acts, God. And we will be unified. We will be in unity and on one accord, God. Increase our faith like the church in Acts, God. Increase our faith, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the now faith that's hitting the room, Lord God. Move by your spirit like you said you were going to move. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, says you, Lord. And I drive out sickness tonight. I drive out darkness tonight. I come against arthritis tonight, God. I come against COVID tonight, God. I come against carpal tunnel. Oh, I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's bread. And as I'm praying now, I thank you that your healing virtue is going forth, even to calling tonight, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that every plot and scheme of the enemy is being boomeranged back, God. I thank you that you're perfecting everything that concerns us. Help us not to get caught up in what we see, God, for what we see is temporary. But God, the things of you is what's internal, God. Oh, God, help us to keep our eyes on you. And I say tonight that we will lift up our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help cometh from you, God. And I praise you in advance like she just said. I put an advance praise on it. And I thank you, Jesus. Oh, I know that when blessings go up, I mean praises go up, 
that blessings come down, God. And your blessing is on this house, and it's moving from the head down. And I thank you for what you're even doing in my life, God. You said where two or three come together, touching and agreeing, that you be in the midst, and that it shall be done. And we call that thing done in the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm going to ask the band to take it back up here in just a second. And this is kind of funny, but all afternoon, I've had the song, Jesus on the Main Line. <laughs> Tell them what you want. And when she started talking about that advanced praise, there's something on that. And so I'm going to ask the band here on the count of three to take it back up. And I want you to give him something costly tonight, an advanced praise, knowing he's already done it. I don't care what you come in here with, what you're carrying, what you're facing. He's the God who's already done it. It was a finished work. One, two, three, lift him up, lift him up. place 
to be, but I feel if we do one more push, take it up just a bit more, I feel like he's increasing our capacity tonight. He's increasing our faith tonight. So one more time, I'm going to ask that worshipers, young adults, I'm going to ask that you come on up to the front. We're not waiting on a worship team to lead us. And I want to give him an advanced praise tonight. I want to give him a praise that says, I believe you. I believe that nothing is impossible with God. So on the count of three, I want you to lift up a shout. I want you to lift up a praise. I want you to lift up a victory dance. Ready? One, two, three. Come on, don't stop tonight. Come on, don't stop. If you're not doing it for you, do it for your prodigal. Do it for your spouse. Do it for that person that can't be here. Lift him up. Lift him up.
story in the Bible about a man named Hezekiah. And it says the prophet of the Lord came to Hezekiah and said, this is the word to you. You're going to die. Very edifying word. And I feel like there's people in this room who have been given words by doctors, by their bank accounts, by their prodigals. And this is what the Bible says. It says the prophet came and said, this is the word to you. You're going to die. And he leaves. And it says this is what Hezekiah did. He said he turned to the wall. He turned to the thing that looked impossible to move. I'm looking at a room full of people who are looking at some things that look really impossible to move. And this is what he did. He cried out to the Lord and said, remember my faithfulness to you. And this is what the Bible said before the prophet could ever even leave his property. It says the prophet came back and said, the Lord is adding years to your life. His word changed. That situation changed. That wall came down. And so tonight, I want us to go back into that. And I don't want you to ignore the walls in front of you. I want us to look dead at that wall, that impossibility. God works best at impossibilities. I want us to look at that wall and say, walls come down. Walls come down. Cry out. Come down. Come down. They're coming down. Break every chain, break every chain, break every 
on, lift your voice all over this room. <laughs> comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? They're tearing me down. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? Their time is now. Feel the earth shaking. The time has now begun. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? The time has now begun. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? The time has now begun. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? The time has now begun. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? The time is now begun. Here comes another wave of revival. Can you feel the earth shaking? The time is now
your voice all over this room. Come on, lift your voice all over this room. Try. 
generation there has always been a man and a woman that God has raised up to take us to another level to another place to another glory and revival every generation God has used powerful men and women men and women unknown to man but very common to God I believe that in this last hour that God is raising up some voices that are going in to revival fire and they're coming out with fire. And I believe that he is looking for some people who will say, I can't stay here. I've got to go higher. It's been good where grandma was. It's been good where my auntie was. It's been good where all my sisters, but there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I want more. I've got to have, I've got to have more. I've, I've got to have more. More of his presence. More of his glory. More. I've got, I've got to have. I've got to have. Shout it. I've got to have. Tell somebody. 
somebody, I've got to have more. I've got to have more. Holy Spirit is moving in this hour. Holy Spirit is picking out his remnant. Who's a part of that? There's a picked out people. There's a called out people that's been picked out. Somebody say, I am. I am. Say, I am. I am. Somebody shout, I am. I am. No, somebody shout, I am. I am. I am. I am that person. I'm going higher. I'm going to get all I can. And I'm bringing everybody with me. I'm bringing everybody with me. I'm not going in this by myself. I'm bringing everybody with me. The devil's not going to have my children. The devil's not going to have my mind. The devil's not going to have my body. The devil's not going to have my grandbabies. The devil's not going to have my family. The devil's not going to have my marriage. Every bit of them, every one of them are coming with me. I believe there's some people here tonight you wouldn't be here tonight if you weren't hungry you wouldn't be here tonight there is a voice that is in the room that God has sent to us and we're going to release that voice and I know that God has sent this man of God here Tony Soares Pastor Tony for this moment in time he has sent him here and God is using this mighty man literally around the world and across North America in many, many places, he's setting up tents of meetings of revival where hundreds and thousands of people are being changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. He can tear southern border. Come on, come on. We're going to see revival from shore to shore, from border to border, from state to state, and around the world. We're going to see it. Somebody shout, we're going to see it. Say it, we're going to see it. We're going to see it here, we're going to see it there. We're going to see it over here, and we're going to see it over there. It's coming, and it's now. I said, it's now. Somebody shout, it's now. No, somebody shout, it's now. It's now. And I want you just to return to your seat and just prepare your hearts. Because we're going to receive an offering, and, and then we're going to re- just, going to, just going to turn this man of God loose. And I tell you what I want you to do while you're preparing right now. I want us to fill up these chairs that are empty right here. Those of you in the back, if you will, just get up and just move and come to these empty chairs right here, right here. I don't know if you've ever been on this on this side of the, of the, of the room, you don't like empty chairs. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Let's see who else is going to miss them. <laughs> there they come. I like those red shirts. I like those. I don't know what they mean, but I... Pastor Caleb's, oh yes, glory be to God. Give them a great God bless you as they come. It's okay, guys. Thank you so much for being obedient. There's a beautiful crowd here tonight. Thank you for coming tonight. This is our rain in the valley. God spoke uh, to Pastor and I, and we've been starting these once a month rain in the valley meetings every Sunday night. Sunday night of once a month. And God has been moving. God has been doing glorious things. And this morning was powerful. Pastor Tony brought such a glorious, glorious word this morning. Um, I don't. I tell you, there, there's an anointing on this man of God that is. There's so many different anointings that he carries, and so many uh, different impartations that he carries. I believe he's one of the greatest preachers, beside my husband of all times. He carries such a powerful, powerful anointing powerful anointing for healing and deliverance and this morning was a powerful service he preached on nothing is too hard for God if you believe that shout amen (laughs) how many of you were here this morning you received that word wave at me let me see your hand it was powerful it was powerful I want us tonight to be very generous I want us tonight to be very generous our pastor has already told us what this man of God is going to leave here with at least with ten thousand dollars for his next crusade that he has ahead of him. And you say, how is that going to happen? Because the Holy Ghost is going to speak to you and me. Come on. Let's believe it's going to be 20 when it's finished or 30 or 40. But you know what's at stake? Souls. And you can't put a price on souls. You can't put a price on souls. 
So I just want you to prepare your heart right now. If you want to make, make a check, make it payable to Dwelling Place Church International, DPCI. And, um, and he'll get all of these, this money, every single solitary penny and dime. We'll make one check. If you're watching tonight, we want to say God bless you for tuning in tonight uh, with this, uh, with this um, Rain in the Valley night with Tony Soros. He was here uh, a year ago, I think it was, or something like that. Um, and, and he's back again tonight, and I, I, I welcome you here. But I want to encourage you to give. <clears throat> Giving is, you know, a seed never leaves your life. Say that. A seed never leaves my life. Say that. A seed never leaves my life. It goes into the future. Do that with me. It goes into the future. Multiplies. Let me see you multiplies and come back to me. Comes back to me. Say that. A seed never leaves my life. Watch this. It goes into my future. Come on, do it with me. It goes into my. It multiplies and it comes back to me. Now, if you believe that, shout. Okay. So, on that point then you're going to want to make a big seed tonight. You want to give God a great seed tonight. We're not giving to this man necessarily. We're giving to God. So those of you who are giving online, there's three ways to give. And there's, there's the way to give right there. Cash your check online, text to give, church center app. However you give, you just be a part of this great, great man of God's ministry, what he's doing. Praise God. I want everybody to get something in your hand, babe. Give me something in my hand. Praise God. Give me something. You got anything? You don't have anything? Okay. Okay. Come on, get something in your hand. Don't look at me. Get something. I guess this is all I got right here. This is all I got. But I'm believing for a big miracle. Come on, I'm believing for a big miracle. Anybody in the house believe for a big miracle? Yeah. If you, give, if you give bountifully, you shall reap. If you give sparingly, you're going to reap. That's why I'm going to give big. I'm going to generously. I got every bit of cash out of my bag. I went on a trip. I stopped at a specific airport. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> and I, I, I was catching another flight, was, and, but I needed to eat something because I was taking some medication, and I, I got me a hamburger. I know. Don't you judge me. Don't you judge me. I'll come out there. And, uh, and then I stopped somewhere and got me a big, tall uh, bottle of water. <clears throat> I got back. I get, I get to my destination, and they say, uh, Miss Tuttle, uh, did you make a purchase for $562.79 at this place? No. Did you make a purchase for $797.52? No. Did you make a purchase for $600? No. There was nine different charges of hundreds of dollars that never got through. Thank God for those fraud alerts. Amen. So I, I, I've been reduced to cash, all right? <laughs> Everywhere I went that weekend, I'd tell those girls, I don't have any card. I don't have a card. I don't have a card. But I've got cash tonight. If you're ready to give, get on your feet. Come on, everybody. We're going to give, and we're going to bless this man of God abundantly, abundantly, abundantly. Put up those declarations. I want you to shout these declarations like your hair's on fire. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you in advance for we expect now we believe all our debts are removed. We believe the Lord today for say it. Come on. Checks in the mail. Blessings increase.
principalities, powers, and familiar spirits, that they have no right to touch my life in any way, for I am in covenant with God and hidden in the secret place of the Most High. I seal these declarations in the name of my Lord. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I according to the power that works in me. Bring those offerings. Come on, bring those offerings. If you're doing it by phone, show God you're serious about it. Walk up and tap that basket. Come on, that's the way we do around here. Just let him know how serious you are. You tap that phone on the basket, and that $1,000 will go all the way through. Amen. Who's excited? Well, that's about two and a half of you. Who's excited? Amen. Amen. It's great to see our visitors here tonight. And uh, we've got several visitors. It's good to see um, Pastor Caleb McCall all the way over here. From... Did you arrange that racket? No? All the way over here from Tullahoma now, right? From Tullahoma. Bella, it's good to see you. How many remember Bella singing at Pursuit Conference? Stand up and let us see you, sweetheart. This girl right here is powerful. Powerful. And I, I see Pastor's mother here today. God bless you. And the young man there, tell me who you are. Hayden. Aiden. Aiden. How you doing, man? It's good to see you. Welcome to Dwelling Place. Who else is here? Mark and Beth Collins came all the way back up here from Beaufort, Georgia. This is my cousins. Come on, y'all can do better than that. That's my family right there. It's good to see you guys tonight, others in the room. And all of these brothers, I preached with y'all. How long ago has that been? Did y'all know I hadn't been invited back? What's up with that? It's good to see all you guys tonight. I love you in the Lord. How many of you come in the king's table? Okay, okay just, just so, that, so that you know my heart, every one of these get in free. Yeah. Now who's coming to king's table? Yeah, that's what I thought. God bless you all. God bless you all. It's good to see everybody. Anybody else tonight visiting? All the way in the back, all the way. Yeah, God bless you. Where are you from? North Cleveland. Well, that's a mighty long way. That's just right over the trees. Good to see you all. Welcome to Dwelling Place. We're glad you're here. And, uh, of course, it's great to have Pastors Jim and Kathy Milligan in the house tonight. Stand up. Please stand up. Let us recognize. This is our family right here, y'all. Y'all know Jim and Kathy Milligan. Y'all know them. They're our family. Forty years. 40, at least 40 years, we've been friends, and uh, so blessed to have them. I'm going to need a little piano in these front monitors. I'm going to go ahead and do the quick sound check. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's doing a sound check. Give me some piano in the front monitors, please. Just keep coming at me. Keep coming at me. Keep coming at me. Keep coming at me. Are you talking about me? <laughs> a little less than that. Thank you, sir. Those of you watching online, we welcome you into Rain in the Valley at Dwelling Place Church here in Cleveland, Tennessee. You've plugged into power, I can tell you that. Stay tuned. Don't turn the channel. Don't turn the computer off. Uh, if you go get a pack of uh, 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 a honey bun, hurry back. You're going to want to miss the outpouring. How many of you just this morning was off the charts? Unbelievable what God did this morning. Carter, it sounds really nice. Just take it down just a little bit more. You got the best piano player I ever played with in the house today. Of course, you can change it when you get up here, but anyway. I, I'm setting it like I'm about to preach. Amen. This morning was amazing, and I know God has double-double tonight. Open up your hearts and just receive what God has for us. And um, I love this man of God. I love his wife. I miss her tonight. I miss the family. But next time, I know she'll be here. She says hello. She misses being here, I know. But stand to your feet tonight. Let's, first of all, I, say, I, I want you to say this. Say, come Holy Spirit, do in me what you want to do in me. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's welcome to the platform again, Pastor Tony Suarez. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's an old song that says, shackled by a heavy burden. Do you remember that one? I was neath a load of guilt and shame. I wish Pastor Judy was singing it. But then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. See, that's what a lot of people don't understand. That what, see, what had happened was he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me. If that's your testimony, sing one more time with us. He touched me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh. The joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know He touched me and made me. A few years ago, I had the privilege to have dinner with a great man of God used all over the world. It's actually how I was introduced to Pastor Judy's ministry many years ago, watching This Is Your Day with Benny Hinn. I was having dinner with him one night, and he said, have you ever asked yourself why I sing? And I said, well, I, I mean, I didn't know how to answer him. I'm like, well, I, I haven't. I mean, I know others have, but I haven't. He said, well, I sing because I create an atmosphere. He said, when I come to the crusades and when I come to the services, he said, I don't know what everyone's going through. I don't know what everyone's been through. He said, but I sing what I know, and I create my own atmosphere. And I get in tune with the Holy Spirit. And he said, when I get in tune with the Holy Spirit through my worship, then, and only then, do the miracles and the healing start. So I want to encourage you tonight, create your own atmosphere. Because your praise is like a magnet. You lift that praise up, and miracles are attracted. Healing is attracted. There's, that's, that's just the power that's in your praise tonight. I don't, know, I don't know if, for those of you that were here in the morning, I don't know if you feel the same way I do, but the burden that I felt this morning has lifted. I don't know if you feel the same. I want to be so careful with the word that I speak to that young family and that baby. But that heaviness has just lifted. I don't know if, if your spirit bears witness, but that lets me know that the Lord is at work. That just lets me know that the Lord has gone before us. And that that thing that seemed impossible, the Lord laughed this morning and he said, Ha, nothing is too hard for me. I think you should praise him right now with a nothing is too hard praise. Give them praise in this room. Give them praise in this room. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Jim is, and, and his wife, sister, Pastor Kathy, have been so... Um, they're your friends, but they became my friends. And there is, no, I don't, I just don't know another piano player like him. And, uh, and, and when, they, when they start playing and singing, whew, they just take us right in to the throne room of God. And there's, there's one other song before we minister today. And again, 
you might not need it. It's just for me. It, it helps me feel better before I preach. But there's another song I used to love, and I can't, I'm in my mid-40s. I still can't stop singing it. It says, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great. And greatly to be praised. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Father, I thank you for literally making this your dwelling place, your house of habitation, the house of miracles. And as we've sung, prayed, and worshiped, I pray and trust that you've taken pleasure in the praises of your people tonight. And I ask that as a witness to that, you would rain down from the heavens signs, miracles, and wonders in this evening's service. Let no one go untouched by the power of God. Let every need be met tonight. Let everything be supplied. And let us leave here saying, surely... We've been in the presence of God. If you believe it, would you praise him one more time as you find your seats? You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I want to thank you because I left, when I got done preaching, I stepped into the other room and I didn't know anything about the offering or anything that you were doing to help us for the revival. And so I can't thank you enough, pastors. For what you're doing. I, I didn't know. Until Pastor Judy said it tonight, I didn't know what you all were doing. And thank you so much. I want to ask if they'd put that graphic up because I want to ask you to pray with me if they have that graphic. Uh, we're calling it Revival on the Border. And so I'd like to tell you that I had supernatural insight when I organized it. But I'm just going to tell you, God just knows what he's doing without you. We're starting in El Paso. We're ending in McAllen. Uh, put the other map on for a moment. It just so happens that El Paso is there. 
and McAllen is there. We're going from New Mexico all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. So we start the first tent revival. There's a reason I have this map up here. We're starting in El Paso on March the 21st. And on the 23rd, there is a group of intercessors that are going to arrive. They're going to come into the tent. We're going to pray over them. We're going to pray them through to the Holy Ghost. We're going to get them sloppy drunk in the Holy Ghost, except for the driver. We need a designated driver. Everybody but him. <laughs> I was about to make a denominational joke, but I'm not going to do that because we're not going to start fights here. Got another, enough religious wars. We don't need one extra. Everyone but the driver. And then 1,254 miles of the southern border. We're going to cover the entire southern border in prayer. Since Washington can't seem to get their act together and do anything about the southern border, we're going to go and do what we know to do. We're not going to go legislate legislation. We're not going to go picket and protest and advocate for this party or that party. We're going to go and pray. We're going to intercede. We're going to bind and we're going to loose. And I believe that the word of the Lord is that he's sending revival to the southern border in the name of Jesus. So that prayer army will leave El Paso and then it will arrive in Presidio. It'll go to Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Laredo, McAllen, and Brownsville. We're going to make six stops in the, six, in the six key points of entry between Mexico and the United States, and we're just going to pray. And we have friends along the southern border that are going to watch on social media so that when the vans get to Eagle Pass, for instance, you've read about Eagle Pass in the news I think, you ought to not, I, I think you ought to not watch the news personally, but that's, that's your business. But if you've been reading about the razor wire fences, and it, that's an eagle pass, okay? So while they're all fighting about that, we're just going to go and we're going to pray in eagle pass. And what I felt the Lord commissioned to do is to get these, we get these big rocks. And, and we've had them painted revival on the border. In the Old Testament, when they did anything significant for the Lord, they would leave a stone of memorial. So we're going to go to those six key points of entry. I want you to know what you, what you gave towards and what I need you to help me pray about. We're going to go to the six points of entry, and we're going to lay a stone of memorial, and we're going to mark someone's been here to pray. They leave all their graffiti saying someone's been here to protest. They leave all their paraphernalia to say someone's been here drug trafficking and human trafficking. We're going to leave some paraphernalia to let them know someone's been here praying and rebuking devils. And calling on the name of Jesus. And we're going to do that. And then by the time that, if we time it all right, by the time we start the tent revival in McAllen, that van, those vans should be arriving in McAllen to join us in the tent revival there. And then I have a pastor from Houston named Pastor Joe who told me that the Lord spoke to him that he is to walk from McAllen to Brownsville praying every step of the way. And so we're going to do that last bit on foot, and we're just going to cover that entire southern border. And this is what I felt the Lord share with me. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, the Lord raised up an angelic border patrol around the Garden of Eden. And he said, since the angels are the ministering spirits of the saints, you are to go and dispatch a heavenly angelic prayer uh, border patrol at the southern border, not just to protect the nation, but to go into the desert and find those that have been deserted. Because there's raped babies, women, men, children that have been left to die in the desert by human traffickers, by cartel, by the Mexican mafia, and by other evil men and women. But I'm believing, because and you say, you know, anytime the Lord exposes you to something, then you can believe for it. My daddy pastored Spanish-speaking churches in Chicago. And I, I'm, I'm telling you at least three people that I can think of right now that in my childhood got off of a bus in Chicago and walked into our church and said they were sent there by an angel. They had crossed through the southern border, woman that had been raped and her children had been tortured, and they had been left to die in the desert. And they said that an angel with wings, not like I wonder if that was an angel. I mean like a biblical angel with wings and all. Showed up and brought them water and food in the desert. 
comforted them, healed their wounds, and then brought them to the bus and said, you go to Calvary Pentecostal Church in Villa Park, Illinois. They'll tell you what to do. And they would get baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost and saved forevermore. And I'm asking the Lord, those same angels that you sent in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, we need them again in the desert. Because those are God's precious children that have been trafficked and left to die. And the event will be English and Spanish because it's for all. It's not just for migrants. We're inviting the Border Patrol to come. We're doing an event to bless the, the families of the Border Patrol. We're going to bless the residents. Everyone has an opportunity to hear the gospel. And we're just going to go and preach Jesus. And that's what I need you to help me pray about. We'll be there at the end of March. Just pray protection, supernatural favor. Uh, I mean, we have, we, we, there's just a lot that's going to be taking place there. And it came out of divine assignment. I was on a program called Flashpoint with Gene Bailey, and Gene Bailey looked at me and said, you're supposed to do a tent revival on the southern border. And I, well, what are you going to do? We're on live TV. Say, oh, I'm going to pray about it. I said, okay. I said, yes, sir. All of this was a divine, supernatural thing, and the Lord has put it together. When I told you I wish I had prophetic insight, it was the Lord who knew to cover the entire border with revival. And so in between that, there's going to be rallies. And so Evangelist Elliot, another evangelist named Evangelist uh, Nathan Pimentel, they're going to go and they're going to help me do those six other services. And I am believing the Lord, and I, I've learned not to cap the Lord with numbers. But I'm asking for a minimum of 5,000 people that are going to testify that they had an experience with Jesus on the southern border. I'm believing that revival is coming. Revival... Revival's coming to the southern border. In fact, i got to eat my words because I don't believe it's coming. I believe it's already here. And we're going to step into it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, pastors. I love you all. I bless this house. I'm so looking forward to what God's going to do tonight. Can you say amen? amen? I want you to know if you came with a need, you came to the right place. If you've tried everything else, I'm glad you're about to try Jesus. Because this, this is the night when miracles happen. This is the night when everything wrong can be made right in one moment. Isn't it amazing how you can be waiting years? I wish I understood God's timing. I could alleviate, I could alleviate a lot of headaches and stress. I don't understand his timing. All I know is that when God says, now. He'll write 10 years in one miracle moment. He'll take three years of pain, and it'll be as if nothing happened. And I just have a hunch tonight is one of those nights. If that bears witness with your spirit, would you give him praise tonight? <clears throat> I want to go to the book of Supray for everyone that has a need tonight, and I'm believing God for great things. And while you're finding Psalms 142 and verse 5, uh, it would fail me if I did not greet you on behalf of a very special man in my life, a man that I, I look to as my pastor, and he loves this house, and he loves your pastors. Pastor Sam Rodriguez told me, he said, you can't go to dwelling place and then act like I don't exist. He said, you let them know that I love them. He said, greet them on my behalf, and so I bring you greetings from Sacramento, California, on behalf of Pastor Sam Amen. And my wife wishes she was here, uh, but she isn't. Hallelujah. All right. Psalms 142, verse 5. The Bible says, Then I pray to you, O Lord, and I say, You are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. Another translation says, Thou art my hope. And I want to preach to you today what I believe is the word of the Lord for this evening. Father, thank you for what you've already done, for the wonderful spirit of expectation. I ask you to use me for your glory. Let everything we say, everything we do, bring glory to you. I ask you to confirm your word with a mighty move of your spirit. Healing, miracles, and Holy Ghost baptisms. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. There was a, uh, <clears throat> if, you pick, uh, if you were to pick one of the top three, uh, may, maybe five characters of the Bible that are mostly used in sermons and books and songs, uh, David would have to be, I would believe, probably in the top, in the top three. And I thank God 
that he allowed for David's life to be narrated and written and shown in the scripture so that we could learn from this great man of God's life. When you say David, uh, most people's mind will say Goliath, or they'll think about the mighty ruler, uh, king of Judah and Israel, of which to this day the Israelites, the Jewish people, say that there's never been a greater king than King David. Some will remember uh, that great king or that great warrior or that great songwriter, but that's not the moments that really made David who David is. If you really want to know someone, you don't get to know them by their victories. You have to know them by their fight. If you really want to know what made someone the way they are, you'd have to sit back, hush, and just let them tell you their testimonies so that you can understand what they have been through because what they have been through is what shaped them and molded them and made them who they are today. So tonight, that's what I really want to focus on. I don't want to focus on the warrior. I don't want to focus on the king. I don't really even want to focus on, on that great hero. I want to focus on the abandoned orphan shepherd boy left on a hill tending to his flock where, who had a dad who didn't really believe in him, brothers who didn't really want to hang out, and we don't really know where his mother was. The Bible never describes it, but nonetheless, we don't know where mom is either, and he spent his youth tending to a flock of sheep or a herd of sheep, I guess, on a hillside. While everyone else was in line for greatness, everyone else was in line for an anointing, everyone else was at battle, and everyone else was feasting and rejoicing, yet David finds himself on a hillside, but on the hillside, while, though it looked like he was all alone, David was not alone. He had discovered the presence of God. If you really want to know what made David who he was, it wasn't Goliath, it was the lions, the tigers, and the bears. Oh my, if you really want to know what made David, David, it wasn't when the handmaidens were singing songs about him, but it's when he was singing songs alone to a choir of sheep. If you really want to know what made David, David, it wasn't, when, it wasn't when he sat on the throne room, but it's when he sat in a pasture and would play his harp and sing melodic hymns unto God and worship and lift up the name of God. In those places, God had, it was as if David was performing the greatest concert to the greatest audience because his song was solely unto the Lord. I know a lot of people that will sing to a crowd. They will sing in a concert. They will sing if they're paid enough. They'll sing it if there's enough people. But it takes a true worshiper to say this isn't for anyone or anything. This isn't for money. This isn't for, this isn't for a contract. This isn't for the next conference. This is just because of who you are. And I have wondered at times what was it that caused David to say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What was it that would cause him to just on a hillside say praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. I grew up, you can tell, I'm, I'm churchy. You know, I'm a church boy. I've always been a church boy. When I was four years old, I'd put on my suit. I'd watch PTL with Jim and Tammy Baker, and then I'd flip over and I'd put my square glasses on and I'd play the piano with Jimmy Swagger. I was a weird kid. I baptized my toys. I just, I love, I love church. And I remember getting dressed up and in the basement, I'd preach to those toys. I'd lay hands. I'd fire on your life. All the G.I. Joes just fall out under the glory of God. I'm a, I so I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be in the basement preaching in the sanctuary. I, I even had a tape ministry at five. I'd put a tape, I'd put a cassette in that little Fisher Price cassette player, and I'd record myself preaching. You ought to hear some of those sermons. My God, I was strong. I'm rebuking Catholics and Baptists. I mean, I'm just calling stuff out by name. Woo, I was, I was tough. I wouldn't sit under my own ministry right now. I couldn't sit under five year old Tony. He's too tough. I'm, you should hear some of those tapes. I'm, I'm saying, you don't hear me up in this place, up in this sanctuary. I'm preaching in the basement. Well, now, but see, that, that helps me understand David. Because David was not in a sanctuary. He was not in a temple. He was not even in a palace. When he said, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellence. He was on a hillside. 
He was preaching to flowers and grass and trees. He was preaching to animals and birds in the air. Yet he said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. He was commanding the grass to praise him and the trees to praise him. I got a hunch that a tree just kind of gave the Lord a wave offering because of what David was proclaiming when no one was watching him. His greatest praise was not found on the mountaintop but on the hillside. And what I really want to focus on tonight is the praise of the cave. Because some of his greatest praise came from a network of caves around the Dead Sea. Saul had become so jealous of David, the anointing on his life, the future that God had promised him, and Saul didn't know how to pass a baton, let alone share a baton. Saul was so infuriated with jealousy towards David that he sought to kill the same one that killed Goliath. And it caused David to have to leave everything he knew, everyone he knew, and he was forced to live in a network of caves around a dead sea. Have you ever had to live in a dead place? Have you ever had to live in a place where it doesn't seem like anything can live and anything can prosper and nothing can go right? That's what I want to preach to you tonight about this man called King David. It was at this point in his life where he lost his wife, his children, his family. He lost his money. He lost his property. He lost his position in Saul's army. He lost his advisor in the prophet. He lost his friend in Jonathan. He lost everything but his praise. He lost everything but his heart towards God. And while on the run, he found himself in these caves in a dead place. And it was here that he began to journal and write down and open up to God about the frustrations of his life. And I thank God that he did it. Because by doing so, he let me know it's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to not understand everything that's going on. He, let, he gave me permission to not fake it till you make it. Aren't you, re, aren't you thankful for real Christians that aren't faking it, but they'll just, they'll just be honest. Listen, it wasn't really what I expected. Things haven't really been going my way, but I'm not going to let that steal my praise. Because I know too much about God to let a temporary circumstance change what I've always done. I'm not governed by the temporal. I'm governed by the eternal. So even when I'm in a dead place, even when I'm in a cave, I'll say, blessed be the name of the Lord. So it's in the cave that David began writing psalms that change people's lives. It was in the cave that David wrote, wrote Psalms 142. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. That verse blesses me because it gives me permission to complain. There's nothing wrong with complaining as long as you complain to the right department. We have a grocery store up there in East Tennessee. We got two, Food City and Ingalls. And then the rich people shop at Publix. But the rest of us, we got Food City and Ingalls. When I first moved to Johnson City, I didn't know it was Ingalls. I thought it was Ingles. And I got a kick out of them having a Spanish grocery store. I told Gina, I'm like, look, that's kind of funny. I never thought I'd come to the mountain. She's like, honey, it doesn't say Ingles. It says Ingalls. I'm like, oh. When Gina's out of town, I eat what I want. <laughs> and there is a bag of store brand cheese ravioli at Food City that as good as the caterers of this church cook, I'm going to tell you right now, that cheese ravioli, they're going to serve it at the marriage supper of the lamb. That stuff is powerful. I've fallen out probably two times eating that stuff. Just alone. No catcher. I go to the sofa and just fall right out. It's good. And once the water's boiling, that stuff is ready in three and a half minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I like quick cooking. I love that stuff. And when Gina's not home, I'm known to go to Food City and get a bag for me. 
I wait till the kids are at school so I don't have to share. I just eat that stuff by myself. And that bag costs like $3.99, and it's good. I know that bag. It's a clear bag. It's got blue letters, blue block letters on there. Food City Ravioli. One day, Gina was gone. And I said, self, guess what day it is? I said, I know. Cheese Ravioli Day. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. And so I got ready, and I went to Ingalls, and I was walking through the frozen food section, and I couldn't find my ravioli. And I'm looking high and low, and I thought, why do they have to mess with the coolers? Why do people move things? Just let it be constant. Let it always be at the end of aisle 13 to my right and your left. Let it just be there. Second door over. I walk. It's not there. I rebuke the devil. Walk back. It still wasn't there. I called things as though they were. Still wasn't there. And the light turned off in the cooler. I got real nervous. And you know how you all are. Remember, I was raised in Chicago. So, you know, Chicago, you all are so nice in Tennessee. You go driving, people wave at you. You go on a walk in your neighborhood. You, walk, if you start waving at people in Chicago, they're going to shoot you. Why you wave? Did I ask you to wave? Why uh, you wave and guns are coming right out? What 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 what's happening? People are so nice, and everyone is baby or sugar or honey or and even when you get mad, even when you get your, even when you want to you know have an attitude, it still comes out. Bless your heart. I mean, it's like, and so this lady walks over to me. She sees the she must have seen the frustration on my face, and she comes over. She goes, Hey, Dow, can I help you? I'm like, yeah, you can. And I'm trying to be sweet, but I can't fake it. I'm like, where's the ravioli? She, Baby, which one are you looking for? I'm like, the store brand. I'm not fancy. I'm humble. I just need the generic. I, I said, it's a clear bag with blue letters. I'm like, you're new here? She's like, baby, I'm the assistant manager. I'm like, well, you, better, you might need to go find the manager because I, I, all I know is right now, I don't know where my ravioli is. I'm taking a really long time to tell the story, by the way. And she said, honey, I don't think we carry it. I said, <coughs> excuse me. I know I don't look like much. <laughs> but I am a professional connoisseur of cheese ravioli. And I'm telling you, it's aisle 13 to my right, second cooler door. It's always there. And about that time, the manager comes over. And, I mean, he just walks over. Well, howdy. And I said, hello. He said, what's the trouble? I said, the trouble is you're out of the ravioli, and she doesn't know about it, and I just don't understand. My wife is out of town, and that doesn't happen often. And today's cheese ravioli day for me. All 52 of my children are at school. I don't need a lot in my life, but I need a cheese ravioli day every now and then, and I don't know where it is. He said, you tell, are you sure we got that here? I'm like, yes, you do. I said, I get it when I can. He said, tell me about the bag again. I said, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want him. I said, it's a clear bag. And in blue letters, it says, Food City Cheese Ravioli. And about that time, he put his arm around me. He said, son, you're at Ingalls. I didn't say anything. I turned around, walked out, and I've never been back to Ingalls. See, there was nothing wrong with my complaint. I was just complaining at the wrong store. I was complaining in the wrong department. There's nothing wrong with your complaint. But you take it to Facebook, you TikTok about it, you Snapchat it everywhere, you tell everyone else about it, and there's no one that can solve it, there's no one that can heal it, there's no one that can bring you an answer, but behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. David said, I will make my complaint known before him. I've lost family, I've lost my army, I've lost my money, I've lost my property, but I haven't lost God. God, there's someone in this room that feels like they've lost it all, but I want you to know, even when you've lost it all, you can't lose 
God. You can't stray away. You can't walk away. And if you do, he'll find you. The Bible says if you'll care for the birds of the air, how much more won't he care for his children? And David finds himself in this place. He says, I'll make my complaint known before God. He said, my spirit is overwhelmed. Thou knowest my path in the way wherein I should walk. He said, I look to, the, to my right hand and no one would help me. Refuge has failed me. No man cares for me. He said, but I cry unto you and I say, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Thou art my help. Notice the desperation, yet the faith that comes out at the same time. He's in, an, he's in a place he hasn't been to in a long time, yet he still knows thou art my help. I want to tell someone today that when everything else fails you, he is your help. When family abandons you, when no one likes your post on Facebook and you can't get a retweet and you can't even get someone to give you a read on your text message, I want you to know he is your help. When the doctors fail you and the report isn't what you were expecting, he is your help. When this government does what it's doing and inflation rises and rumors of recession abound, he is your help. When you look to the left and the right and there is no help, he is your help. David has lost everything but his help. And as weeks, as days turn into weeks, and he's got to go from one cave to the next cave. David writes his second psalm of the caves, Psalms 57. He says, be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I'll cry unto God the Most High, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Listen to the difference in his words and the way we normally react. Today is a miracle service. But I'm, we're going to talk about the power of praise and how that directly impacts you for a miracle. If it would have been me in the cave, I would have said, why me? God, where are you? God, do you know that my dad was a preacher? And my mom? And my grandfather? And my grandmother? Lord, do you know I've been a tither? I would be rehearsing my resume to God. David didn't do that. He would recite God's resume back to himself. Thou art my deliverer. Thou art a way maker. Thou art a soon and present help in the time of trouble. David would encourage. This is The Bible talks about David encouraging himself. He didn't do that one time. This was a daily thing. This was a, this was a every now kind of a thing that David learned to do. He knew that when trouble comes, you don't focus on your trouble. You focus on God. David knew when trouble comes, I don't keep talking about what I'm going through. I focus on God. And he begins to praise God in the cave. He says, God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions. I lie even amongst them that are set on fire. But, and, but listen to what he says. He says, but be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. He said, they prepared a net for my steps, but my heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed fixed. I will sing and I will give praise. And then he says, wake up, my glory. Wake up, psaltery. Wake up, harp. I'm going to wake up early and I'm going to praise thee, O Lord, amongst the people. He literally had to wake up his praise. He literally talking to himself said, wake up glory, wake up harp, wake up song, wake up shout, wake up dance. I've come in the name of the Lord as a Holy Ghost alarm clock to wake up your praise because your miracle is on the other side of your praise. So wake up the shouting, wake up the clapping, wake up the dancing, wake up the running, wake up the exuberance, wake up the joy, wake up the piano. 
piano. Wake up the drums. Wake up the guitars. Wake up the bass. Let everything wake up and give God praise. I told you this morning, uh, be, because of, of, of seeing that young baby, the, the, the baby with the, prophet, with the prophet's name, who I, can't, I won't be able re, to pronounce it, just like most of the names in the Old Testament. Prophet Adams, is that his last name? Yeah. Prophet Adams, I'm just going to call him Prophet Adams. I told you, I rehearsed to you today the story about my daughter, Michael, when she was born premature and almost died. And the Lord said, praise me. And I had to learn in that NICU unit, in that ICU unit, I had to learn that praise isn't out of emotion. Praise is a commandment. I had to sing when I didn't feel like singing. I had to worship when I didn't feel like worshiping. I had to learn how to sing when I didn't even have a song. And I had to borrow someone else's song. I had to learn to pace in a hospital room. Didn't feel, But I had to turn the hospital room into a sanctuary of the presence of God. And the more I sang, the more glory I would feel. The more I would worship, the more anointing I would feel. I had to go into a dead place and wake up my praise. David was in a dead place. David was in a place where nothing lives but salt. David was in a place where there are no animals, there are no humans. It is a dead place. But David woke up a praise in a dead place. He didn't wait to go to a new level and a new dimension and a new mountain. He said, I'll praise you right here. I'll praise you while I'm hidden. I'll praise you in the secret place. I'll praise you while people are after my life and people are seeking to kill me, but I'm going to wake up my praise right here in the middle of my battle. I'm going to wake up a praise. I some There is a day, I feel it, there is a David in this room. You have cussed out every devil. You've complained about everything. Now wake up a praise. Wake up a song. Wake up a shout. Wake up a dance. And watch what God will do. He woke up his praise. Because that was always his greatest weapon. In fact, when he did go to fight Goliath, he went praising. If I, go, if I had gone to fight Goliath, I would have walked on the battlefield saying, oh my God, 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 oh my God. That's not how David walked out. He, tra- he turned that battlefield into a testimony service. He tuned up, went right into E-flat, had him get on that hammer. He said, I remember ah, when the bear came after the sheep. And I remember ah, when God delivered me from the bear. Ah, ah, and then he went up. He said, I remember ah, when the lion showed up. And God, rem- and God delivered me from the lion. He said, thou comest against me with a sword, a spear, and a shield. But I come against you in the name of the Lord. He didn't pray about anything. He praised about everything. He turned a battlefield into a praise and worship service. He was waking up his faith by waking up his praise. So now in this dead place, that's exactly what he's doing. He's found his greatest weapon is his praise. I'm telling you, if you need a miracle tonight, if you need healing tonight, if you need money tonight, if you need God to work on that marriage, if you need God to work on those children, it's on the other side of a praise. There's something about when you praise God. God takes pleasure in the praises of his people. And when you praise God, something changes in the atmosphere. And I can tell you why. It's not even a secret. He let us know. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. You want God to be in the middle of that mess? Praise him in the middle of the mess. You want God to show up in divorce court? Praise him in the divorce court. You want God to pray? You want God to show up when you're going through money trouble? Praise him when you still have money trouble. And when he comes, he won't leave anything the same. Change comes. Deliverance comes. Salvation comes. I think you ought to take maybe five seconds and praise him right now. There's a miracle on the other side of that praise. There's a miracle on the other side of that shout. Come on, wake up, praise. Wake up, shout. Wake up, dance. Wake up. Wake up. And let the glory of God fill the room. Hey, Jesus. If that doesn't make you want to praise the Lord, then let me help you a little further. 
Because while David was in the cave lifting up God all by himself, while he was saying, I will sing and give praise. And while he was waking up the praise and waking up the sultry and waking up the heart, from the mouth of the cave, he heard a voice say, David! He said, I know that voice. And the voice called out again, David, are you there? When all of a sudden, in the middle of a praise and worship service, David's daddy walked into the cave and said, I've been looking for you. A little while later, his brother said, David, David. His brothers found him in the cave. I want to make sure that you understand what I'm telling you right now. David didn't have to go find his daddy. His daddy found him. He didn't have to go seek out his brothers. His brothers found him. Something supernatural happened in the cave while David was praising. Everyone that was of value and of eternal, that was eternally connected to him, everything he lost found David in the cave. His father found him. His brothers found him. His family found him. His army found him. While David was praising God, all, everything that he lost, everything that was stolen from him, walked into the cave. Because when you praise God, you don't have to chase down blessings. Blessings will chew out of by. When you praise God, you don't have to chase down a blessing. A blessing will chase you down. And I want to tell a mom in this room tonight that on the other side of your praise while you're shouting in this altar God's working on that wayward boy and on that wayward daughter and one day while you're up here spinning and praising God you're going to bump into that daughter and bump into that boy because while you're praising God God is fighting your battles God is setting your family free and I want to prophesy to someone right now that your blessing is about to walk into your house your money is about to walk into your bank account your healing is about to walk into your body it's on the other side of a pra praise ye the Lord praise God in this sanctuary let everything praise ye the Lord if you gotta do it alone do it alone if no one hears you then no one hears you but I want you to know there's a God in heaven that hears that praise and he answers the praises of his people and I just feel like goodness and mercy healing and wonders just walked in this room while you've been praising the Lord come on do it a little bit right now I just have a hunch that while you praise God not only will your healing walk in, but I got a hunch that while you praise God, cancer's going to have to walk out. Poverty's going to have to walk out. So therefore, praise ye the Lord. I said praise ye the Lord. If you don't feel like it, you still do it because God will honor his word. When you praise him, God shows up and everything I said everything, everything changes on a praise. I just want to thank God because I've been in those places where I had nothing and it felt like I had no one. But I had God. Hallelujah. Ooh, actually, I'm saying it wrong. It's not that I had God, but it's that God had me. I want to thank him that when I was in a dead place, you didn't leave me. You didn't forsake me, and you didn't abandon me. I want to thank you that when they called the ministry dead, we praised it back to life. I want to thank you that when they said I couldn't raise babies on my own, you, we praised victory into our lives. And I want to thank you that there's some people in this room that in about 30 seconds are going to give God their very best praise. And we won't have, we won't have to praise, we won't have to pray for healing. Healing's going to find us. Miracles are going to find us. Hey! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, praise them. I'm prophesying to someone that this week, some things you lost are walking back into your life. 
I'm not talking about the bad stuff, but I'm talking about the things that belong to you. I'm talking about what you thought was a missed opportunity and a closed door. What you thought was gone forever, if it belongs to you, the devil may have taken it, but the devil has to give it back. Like the tomb had to spit out Lazarus. Like the tomb had to spit out Jesus. That same tomb of death and despair is going to spit your health, your wealth, and your prosperity back I'd praise him like it's already done. I'd praise him like it's already done. All right. I got to finish. Hallelujah. He wrote one more psalm before he left the cave. And I promise I'll be done real quick. I'm a, I'm a, I got to go through this thing quickly. He wrote one more psalm in a dead place. Psalms 34. If you put it on the screen, put it up. He said, I will bless the Lord at. I want to thank the Lord that I can bless him at. All means. He said, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he said, oh, magnify the Lord. That's where the song comes from. For he is worthy to be praised. He was still in the cave. He still wasn't delivered. He still, he, he didn't have the throne yet. Saul was still seeking to kill him, but in a cave he said, Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, Hosanna, and blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my son. Hold it. Haven't you ever wondered where some of those songs came from? It came from a cave. Hallelujah. It came from a dead place. It came from a place you weren't expecting. You think, you think that Judy Jacobs wrote her best songs and sang her best songs when she was on the mountaintop? I promise you, there was a valley before there was a mountain. There was a solid, there was a place where she was alone with the Lord. There was a place where no one knew a name, but she knew the name above every other name. And because she could sing there, God said, I'll promote you here. I'm looking for some Davids tonight. That is in the middle of a dead place can say, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify, oh, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Come on, Hosanna, Hosanna, oh, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my son. And as he sang that song, he said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Can you put that verse up there? I, I, I don't know which one it is because I, I'm, I'm in my notes right now. He sought me, and he delivered me from all my fears. Psalms 34. I don't know what verse it is, but I'm going to try to make a point that someone needs. Here it is. And he del Verse 4. It says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. It didn't say problems. It didn't say drama. It didn't say stuff. He got delivered from his fear. I can't promise that everyone is going to have ultimate victory tonight. But I got one mandate from heaven. This entire house is going to be delivered from its fear tonight. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I don't fear sickness. Because if I die, I gain heaven. I don't fear poverty because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I don't fear trouble because he's the way maker and the miracle worker. 
He said, I prayed to the Lord. He answered me and he delivered me from all my fear by the authority of the word of God and the power that's in the name of Jesus be delivered tonight from fear and anxiety, death and despair. Be delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, oh, magnify the Lord. Come on, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Of my salvation. He said he delivered me from all my fears. They looked up to him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. And then he said, someone say, and then he said. Tell your neighbor, watch this. Then he said. Can you put it on the screen so they can read it with me because they might not believe me. Put verse 4 back up there. Go back. Delivered me. He freed me from all my fears. Then verse 5 says. Those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. No shadow of shame will darken their face. And then verse 6, in my desperation, I prayed. And the Lord listened. And he saved me from what? The moment you get delivered from your fear, the very next thing that's going to happen. When he delivers you from your fear, the very next thing is he's going to deliver you from all of your trouble. So if you're ready for trouble to leave, shake off that fear tonight. Get it off of you tonight and just know that the Lord is on your side. All right. I got to finish this thing. He said, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. He said, for the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and he delivereth them out of all of their troubles. And he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. If you can praise God tonight in the middle of a bad place, if you can praise God in the middle of sickness, two things are going to happen. He's going to deliver you from your fear, and then he's going to deliver you from your trouble. I want to prophesy to someone tonight, favor is about to find you. Healing is about to find Deliverance is about to find you on the other side of a praise. So at the count of three, praise ye the Lord. One, two, three. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Without the music. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Tonight, I believe that there's going to be a great harvest of healing and miracles, but I learned a long time ago, it's on the other side of a praise. I was an 18-year-old teenager. I snuck into a Benny Hinn crusade. Why I snuck in, I don't have enough time to tell. But I snuck into that crusade. And for three hours, they sang, 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 and sang. Pastor Benny never had to pray the prayer of faith for healing. Because when the glory showed up, the sick were healed. He just started worshiping. He just started praising. And as he praised, miracles started happening. That's the power of a praise. I told him later, I said, it's like you were a Holy Ghost conductor. Because he, he would just say, yes, Father, I give you praise. 
I saw a woman in the parking lot in a wheelchair with an oxygen tank. In the middle of praise, I heard a shriek, and I looked. She was taking the oxygen tank off, stood up out of the wheelchair, completely walking. No one ever laid a hand on her. Praise did that. It started happening like popcorn all over the stadium as the people were praising God. I was so overwhelmed that I walked out of the Rosemont Horizon. I walked into the lobby. I was just so overwhelmed. And I just, and the ladies are beating on the door trying to get in the building. They were at max capacity. Wouldn't let anyone else in. And these ladies are beating on the door. And this one, she's looking at security. She said, let me in, fool, in the name of Jesus. I mean, you know, Chicago, you know, we, we use fool and brother interchangeably, you know. Let me in. She said, you don't get it. If I just get in the room, I'm going to get a miracle. They were that convinced that if they could just get in the house of praise, everything would change. And that's the day I learned the highest level of faith that exists, expectancy. It wasn't hope. Expectancy. That's what happens when you praise God. All of a sudden, all the things of this world slowly slip away. The, the weight of the burden you're carrying all, all, all of a sudden feels light. The, the sickness all of a sudden doesn't feel overpowering. Because when you magnify the, how do you magnify the God that uses the earth as his footstool? How do you magnify the one that holds the world in his hands? How do you magnify the one that just spoke and everything came into existence? It's not that you magnify him there. You magnify him here. And all of a sudden cancer seems like, HIV AIDS seems like, because you've magnified the Lord. Tonight we're going to magnify Him. And in that atmosphere of praise, anything is possible tonight. If you came tonight needing healing in your body, in a moment I'm going to open this altar. If you need healing in your body, when I count to three, I want to ask you to just line up and just begin to praise the Lord until the Spirit leads us otherwise. Because there's power in your praise. I know for some of you this is going to be your Dead Sea praise. I know for some of you this is going to be a hard place to praise Him in. But I just showed you what God did for David when he praised him in the cave. And not only did God do that, but God took care of every one of his enemies. Because when you learn to praise God, he fights the battle for you. If you need a miracle at the count of three, I'm waiting for you in the front. One, two, three. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. Oh, yes, if there's some singers that can help. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. You deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor. Serve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else. so great there is no one else like you there is no one else 
is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There's just power when you praise Him. There's just power when you praise Him. Hallelujah. I know people have come for physical needs. But the call tonight is also for miracles of families and finances. You're welcome to come as well. can touch my heart no one else can touch my heart like you do I can search for all eternity Lord and find there is none like you I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and great. Sing praises to your name. to the Lord I sing praises I sing praises to your name praises to your name praises to your name for your name is great I think we're almost there. I think we're almost there where the where the miracles are about to begin. I think we're almost there. We're almost there. 
since the last religious spirit, there is a religious stronghold over this part of Tennessee that I have become very aware of anytime I come to the Cleveland Chattanooga area. It's like a triangle stronghold. And, it, and listen, I'm, I'm just going to confess and be very transparent with you. I normally find it very hard to preach in this, in this region. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's, it's like you got to really, and, and, and there's this, but it's different this time. It's different. There's, there's, there's a liberty in the spirit, and I feel it here, which leads me to believe that you've broken the back of that religious spirit here. Yes. Yes. Which leads me to believe that you have been given authority and governance yes. over the region. Yes. That leads yes. me to know right now yes. that that religious spirit had to succumb yes. to the authority of this house. And so everywhere that this church is willing to step, that religious spirit will be broken. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go to evangelize, everywhere you go to sing, that religious spirit is broken in the name of Jesus. And I say that spirit will no longer hold Cleveland. It will no longer hold Chattanooga. It's broken by the power of God. It's like fire. I feel it. Oh, God, I feel it. All right. If you need a miracle, raise your hands. I've been waiting for the moment. I was waiting until I felt it. I don't know if you feel what I feel, but it's like electricity on the inside of me. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I feel it here. It has nothing to do with a man, has nothing to do with a woman, has nothing to do with the humans that are on this platform. It has everything to do with the God that's inhabiting the praises of his people right now by the authority of the word of God. Whew. We take authority over sin, sickness, and disease. Mighty God, when I lay my hands on your people, I pray that the fire of God would flow through their bodies and that they would be healed, they would be delivered, and they would be set free. Father, I ask you to heal broken bones, broken hearts, and broken bank accounts tonight. I pray that ligaments that have been torn would be healed without surgery. I pray that cancer would go. Sexually transmitted diseases would go. I pray that the addiction to alcohol and drugs would be broken this very night by the authority of his word and by the power that's in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free free right now I sing praises to your name touch Woo. Woo. touch oh, Lord. praises to your name oh God hey oh, Lord. for your name for your name is great for your name is great Young lady, it's about to hit you. Fire, fire, fire. Fire, fire, fire. fire. of the Holy Ghost. Woo. Fire, fire, fire. I 
I looked and saw a cloudy ga glaze, a cloudy gaze, and I just saw one trying to find a way and where to go, but I just saw clouds and fog. But when you came out under the power of God, I saw the cloud lifted. I saw the fog go away. You need to know this is the year that God gives you direction and he puts order in your life. This is the year where you're not known for sloppiness or the clouds or not knowing what you're doing. This is the year where people are going to be shocked and awe because you're no longer going to stay where you are. You're going to a higher place in Jesus. Jesus. And I sing praise I sing praises to your name. Touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Praises to your name. Father, by the laying on of hands. Oh, Father. Father, the anointing that's on me. Touch. How great is our God. Yes. Sing with me. How When you were last here, she said, I have can't, I had, ooh, help me, catchers, because I'm about to go with her. She said, I had cancer. And I said, what does that mean? She says, I don't have it anymore. Hey. And it never comes back. Whew. It's fire. Fire. Ooh. ooh. Hold on, stand her back up. Holy Ghost fire. Stand her back up. Because I'm prophesying to you that what God's doing in you, God's doing it for some family members that you've been believing for, some people you've been praying for. You're not just going to be set on fire. You're going to be a carrier of the fire. And everything that comes in contact with you is going to be set on fire as well. Get ready, fire. lady. Here it comes. Touch. Shut up in my bone. Fire, shut up in my bones. It's just fire. Oh. Shut up in my bones. I was waiting. Fire. I was waiting. Ooh, but God said now. 
I saw in crutches earlier. Where is she? What'd you do to your knee? I won't make you do anything crazy. What'd you do to your knee? Is, is that the same as your MPFL? Okay. Y'all don't mind us. We're just having a little chat. So my son had to have surgery because he tore this tendon right here in his knee. Four knee dislocations. He tore that tendon. And so we had to go through surgery, went 19 months without being able to play his favorite sport, which is soccer, but his what? Wrestling. Sure, his wrestling. Listen, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her, she'll hurt you. 19 months, but two days, oh no, yesterday, Saturday, as I was at my son's soccer tournament, because now he's on the varsity team, and Lord, may I lay hands on her? Lord, what you did for my son, I ask you to do it for this young lady. I command the knee to come back into alignment. I command every ligament to be strengthened and stronger than it ever was. And if the doctor looks at the right knee and says, oh, this one needs some strength as well, let it come in supernaturally right now by the power of God. Father, I decree over this young lady. How old is she? I declare she's going to graduate high school. She's going to go on to college. And mom never has to worry about money because her daddy in heaven owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And God told me to tell you he'll foot the bill in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Somebody ought to praise him for the fire. If you, oh. Acá están. Están hablando mi idioma. Speak my language now. Los estaba esperando. Porque lo que Dios va a hacer esta noche va a cambiar años, va a cambiar días y va a cambiar meses. Lo que Dios va a hacer en un momento milagroso va a cambiar no solo el pasado, pero va a cambiar tu futuro. Decreto en esta noche que Dios es el sanador de tu alma, de tu cuerpo y de tu espíritu. I decree tonight. That God's not just taking care of your past. He's taking care of your future. And in one miracle moment, God is going to make everything right. Ya vengo. I'll be right back. You look like you speak Spanish. I'm just kidding. I'll be right back. Ya vengo. No se vayan. If you came to this altar with sickness, but you feel like God's already touched you, and you have an evidence of a healing. You don't even need the whole thing. You just got an evidence that something's happening. Raise your hand. Okay. There's, some, there's a hand right there. Someone else? Raise your hand. All right. I see, those hand, I see hands. I see hands. I see hands. Are you coming for prayer? You're coming. No. Oh, but just prayer. All right. That's good. That's good. You two? Are you coming together or, or separate? Okay. Separate. Take one step closer. Okay, right there. Can I pray for one thing and then I'll pray for whatever you need? And I won't do it all in the mic, by the way. But the first thing I want to take off of you right now is timidity. And I'll take it off of you too. The thing that tells you that you're not worthy to come boldly, I remove it off of your life right now in the name of Jesus. This is going to sound a little silly maybe to some. You deserve the miracle. What you're praying for, you deserve it. You too. Insecurity <coughs> is a wicked thing. So I lift it off of you in the name of Jesus. Off of you too. May it never held, hold you bound any longer. Now... Take one more step into the miracle zone, both of you. The Bible says you can come boldly before the throne of grace. You are a daughter. You are a daughter of the king. And you have as much right as anyone in this room to get the miracle you've been believing for. Now, Father, I don't need to know what she needs because I know the one that can meet the need. 
And since you said where there are two or three that gather in your name that you'd be there, here's one and two. Here's three. And we come into agreement right now and I say, Father, fight the battle and give her the thing that she needs. Lord, every obstacle disappear. Every giant fall down. And may there be a straight path in a crooked place in the name of Jesus. I lay my hand on your head. And I say, sleep like a baby all this week. No more tossing and turning, worrying about this and that. Because we take your worry off of you and we cast it to the king of kings. He'll take care of it. The Lord says, I'll fight your battle. He says, and I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to fight your battle. I'm going to win your battle. Yeah. Father, when I lay hands on these brave, brave men, I pray that the anointing of God would come upon them. These are mighty men of God. Son hombres valientes de Dios. And I pray that when I lay my hand on them, I pray that they would feel victory because they've been in a fight they've been in a battle but you you red-shirted men the Lord told me that this year this is what he told me he told me that this year is not the year where you will be known by your fight but this is the year where you'll be known by your victory that's what he told me Twenty twenty four is the year of the answered prayer, where you're not known by your fight, you're known by your victory. So as I lay my hand on you, I speak victory over you in the name of Jesus. 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 Victoria sobre ti. En el poderoso nombre de Jesucristo. Victory in the name of Jesus. Y profetizo esta noche que sea como lo que prediqué esta noche. Que tu vida sea como la de, de, de David. Que mientras que estás alabando a Dios en la cueva. Todo que fue abandonado. Todo lo que fue robado que te pertenece. Sea devuelto a ti en el nombre de Jesucristo. Now I pray that in this year. Fire who come upon you right now. I pray that this year. I felt it on that man right there. I pray that this year you would be the modern day David. And that while you're seeking the Lord in a lonely place, while you're seeking the Lord in a cave, I say that just like it was for David, let it be for you. Let your children come back. Let your positions come back. May your money come back. May your family come back. May the things that belong to you be restored to you. And may every wicked and foul thing that the enemy tried to, play, that tried to place on you, may it be broken once and for all. Victory, 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 victory in the name of Jesus. Someone shout and give him praise. Sense arise day and night, night and day. Let incense arise day and night, night and day. Let incense arise day and night, night and day. Let incense rise day and night, night and day. Let Sense arise day and night, night and day. You are worthy of it all. Señor, you are que es, dicen que esta es la tierra de oportunidades. Decreto que esta será la tierra de salvación. Tierra de prosperidad y de bendición. Sanidad sobre tu alma, tu mente y tu espíritu en esta tarde. Decreto, tus mejores días están por enfrente de ti. Tu pasado no atará tu futuro. Decreto la bendición de Jehová sobre ti y todos los suyos. Sus hijas, sus hijos, nietos, primos. Todo lo que son. Y mientras que tengo manos impuestas sobre ti. Señor por ese familiar que. Siento que está perdido. Que no han escuchado. Señor. Manda tus ángeles. Rescata. Salva. Y tráelo de nuevo a casa. 
en el nombre de Jesús de Nazaret Siento de parte de Dios orar sobre tu corazón Fuego del Espíritu Santo Aleluya Obra en tu corazón Porque has sido fiel Dios dice voy a traer avivamiento a toda tu familia Reprendo la atadura del enemigo Reprendo todo lo que el enemigo trató Para atarte Y declaro que eres libre Atabashaya Sana y llena del Espíritu Santo en esta tarde Sanidad, sanidad, sanidad La gloria y la bendición de Jehová Venga sobre ti en estos días Señor te, te doy gracias porque estás trayendo orden y dirección, bendición y abundancia. Los días de llorar por la falta, los días de llorar por la pérdida se están acabando. Ahora serán lágrimas de gozo y de alegría. Y dirá como dijo el salmista, has cambiado mi lamento en baile, has cambiado mi tristeza en alegría. Por tanto a ti diré gloria mía La gloria de Jehová venga sobre ti en esta noche La gloria de Jehová venga sobre ti en esta noche Altísimo, yes, milagroso sí. sábado no, no hay nadie como tú Así canta Dios, canta Dios No hay nadie como oh. tú Aleluya La gloria de Dios desciende en esta tarde Elia, socor y amande, se No bajate. hay nadie como oh, tú Oh la gloria de Dios, la gloria No, no hay nadie como tú Altísimo Milagroso Salvador, fire, no hay nadie fire. como tú, no hay nadie como tú, altísimo, milagroso Salvador, no hay nadie como tú, no hay nadie como tú. The Lord to speak to you this night and say just that, like it was for my prophet Elijah who was hidden in a cave and I called into the mouth of the cave and there was a windstorm and there was an earthquake and there was a fire but when Elijah looked I was not in any of those he looked for me in the storm and could not find me you have been the Elijah for you have been in the storm and you said where is God in the shaking in the blowing in the consuming where is God But the Lord says, before there was ever a storm, I said, I go before you. The Bible says that God passed by where Elijah was. He has not been in your storm. He has not been in your battle because he already passed by. 
And if he passed by, it's because he already conquered the storm. I know you're, I, I feel in the Holy Ghost, you're in a place where you don't see God, don't feel God, but that does not negate the fact that God has been there and he's already gone before you. And if he's gone before you, it's to prepare a place for you, a blessing. So I decree tonight, if the storm didn't kill you, if the fire didn't consume you, get ready because you're about to come out on the other side in the name of you Jesus no of arrival. Nazareth. You I have no the storm to an end. Jesus on the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the dark. So, hey, 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 Jesus from the mountain. And Pastors calling for the young adults. I don't know who Jesus they are, but they better get up here quick. Because God has something for them. Victory. Jesus for my family. Victory. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power. Be right back. You, would you happen to have those little communion cups anywhere? Could could I get two? Burn light. Remind me your name. Jackson, I'm coming right back to you. And my name is power. Your when name I let everyone else I've laid hands on, I've tried to just kind of, but when I laid hands on you, God crowns you tonight. He crowns you with the spirit of victory. He crowns you with the spirit of victory. And your hat is right. Peace reigns from this day forward. 
You won't be known by your fight. You're going to be known by your victory. And by the way, get ready to sleep like a baby this week in the name of Jesus. Touch! Jesus in the street. Jesus in the dark. Fire on you tonight. Every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. The Bible says, hold my mic for me, Elliot. The Bible says in the Old Testament, by his stripes, we are healed. But the New Testament says, by his stripes, we were healed. Because Calvary took care of it all. Your healing has already been established because of Calvary. So you were healed. Father, hold this for me again. I thank you for your body. Broken so I could be made whole. Eat the bread. Ha. Ha, ha, ha. Woo, I feel fire in this house. I thank you for the blood that not only washes white as snow, but heals every ailment, including type 1 and type 2 diabetes out there. Drink of the cup. Name is Healed right now in the name of Jesus. Dad, you got nothing to worry about. Someone shout like it's your boy. Healing your name. Life. Your name, your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Pastor, I heard you were healed in the water a few weeks ago. But if there's any little bit of residue that's been hanging out in that body just trying to bother this woman of God, I say that when she and I take communion tonight, it comes out of her and it comes off of her because the world needs her voice and the world needs her ministry. Let's eat that bread, Pastor Judy. Let's drink that cup, Pastor Judy. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over hey, hey, praise Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus hey, Shout Jesus from the mountain Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for Erica. my family. I speak the We're going to have to go old school without drums for a minute. Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus Open that up. in the street. Hey, Ish. I don't know who Ish is, but get up here, Ish. Jesus for my family. Where's Ish? Speak Are you Ish? Hey, Ish, hold this. I'll be to you in a little bit, okay? Just keep it for later. <sighs> Pastor Judy, the world needs you. The world needs you. I know Cleveland needs you, and I know Dwelling Place needs you, but the world needs you. And the king says, I have much use for your gift in this season. I need you, says the Lord. Not, the Lord says, not just as a mentor, not just as a coach, but I need what I put on the inside of you. The voice that has broken generational curses for the last several decades. The voice that has brought healings to millions. The Lord says there's another song in that throat. There's more ministry in that hey, life. Hey. And the Lord says, I have need of you.
And you haven't seen your greatest days, young ladies, for the Lord has elevated you in such a quick time and done such a great work with you as well. But he knows the private cry of your heart that says, more. And he says, this is the year of that answered prayer. This is, the, this is the year, saith the Lord, where I enter into covenant with the two of you. And through this blood covenant that was obtained on Calvary, I will give you the desires of your heart. And no longer will you be dreamers of what I can do. But you will live in the reality of what you have dreamed. No longer will they be dreams. But now they will be your reality. And I pray that as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, if any harm ever came upon you, if anyone ever tried to speak a word curse on you, I say it's broken by the blood tonight in the name of Jesus. Eat that bread. Who you're taking in that word. Uh, oh, man, I feel, I feel, ooh, it's a fighting spirit. There's something different about these ladies. It's almost militant. It's almost mil Now drink of that cup, and when you do, that covenant is going to be activated in you right now. I say it's done. I say it's done in the name of Jesus. Someone give God praise in this room. You don't have to get off the drums. I'm coming to you where you are. Lord, Spirit is heal the broken wall. In the name of Jesus, this is the year you step into your fullness. Come rest on. No more being bashful. No more being timid. No more hiding in the background where no one can see you. This is the year that God brings the warrior spirit out of this young man. And he steps into a place of boldness in the Holy Ghost. And this is it. Hallelujah. 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 And Whatever, I, I wish the Lord would give me a clearer vision. But whatever it is he needs to take care of in your family, the Lord just told me to tell you, I got it, and it's already handled in Jesus' name. Someone give God praise in this house. You're here, and I know that you're moving. I'm here, and I know you're Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart. Staff, get up here, staff. The, the body of Christ. I've never done this in any church I've ever been to, ever before. I take, I, I don't do it religiously, but I take communion almost every day. Almost every day. When my first wife was sick with cancer, I felt from the Lord that I was, have, I was supposed to have communion every single day. And then when COVID came, I, I felt the Lord tell me, go have communion every single day. There's power in it. You know, most of us wake up every morning, we just... I got a friend, a bishop in my life, she's 92 years old, Ann Jimenez, she wakes up every morning, she's on the 24th floor of this high rise in Virginia Beach, she says no curtain on the window, she says I wake up to the sunlight every morning, when I wake up I say this is the day the Lord hath made, I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it, and she said Tony before I do anything else, she said I have my cup and I have my bread, and she said I take communion every day. That woman is 92 years old. If you saw her, you'd think she's 49. There's power in communion. I've never done this in any other church. I've never had communion this many times in one night. Make, everybody's got communion? They already had it, so they don't need I We don't want to get them drunk, but get the rest of the staff communion. Father, there's a few while they're getting them, while they're getting them open. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, you sound like a choir. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. One more time. Oh, the blood. We got people here that speak Spanish. Oh, la sangre de Cristo. Oh, la sangre de Cristo. Oh, la sangre de Cristo.
Cristo me limpia de todo mal. And then, and just, just so I can tug a little bit on my apostolic roots, we'd say, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God, oh, for the blood. It washes white as snow. Come on, thank God one more time. Thank Lord spoke a word through a prophet to this man, I don't know how long ago. One word, and it was transition. The Lord woke me up in the wee hours of the morning, and he said, tell dwelling place, transition and shift. There is a new place that the Lord would take this ministry and this staff to. That new place requires a new level of commitment and holiness. It's a holy thing. It's a holy thing. For so many Pentecostals, let me minister for a moment. For so many Pentecostals, the word holiness has been connected to what you thought was legalism. I say holiness and you think legalism because the enemy crept into the church and he tried to pollute the true nature of holiness. For the Lord said, be holy for I am holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Still, it's still in the book. This new thing that God is going to do, it will require a greater commitment to holiness. But God would not have called this staff and this church to it if you couldn't handle the fight. As you eat of that bread tonight, you're eating that word transition and shift. That word's going to get on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because that word gets on the inside of you, the harvest is going to be, is going to spring forth. I want you to eat of that bread. Eat the word. Now when you drink of the cup, the cup is going to cleanse anything from the past, including stress, Including broken hearts, including wounds of the past, the blood is going to make things whole today. I feel, if I'm out of place, forgive me, but I feel to stand right here and call this house into wholeness. Wholeness. The broken season is over, saith the Lord. It's done. This is the season of multiple. Victory is yours. Drink up the cup. Drink up the cup. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on all over the house. Give them a hallelujah praise. 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 Because the fight is over. Victory has been won. The sickness is over. And healing has come. Come on, give them praise. Give them praise. Give them praise. Hallelujah. We'll play, we'll, we'll play it at that, that slower pace. We don't have to slow it up, but there's an old chorus we used to sing that this house needs to declare tonight. We used to say, victory 
is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, you got to go. Victory today is mine. One more time, victory. Victory is mine. Oh, yes. Victory.
His healing and His precious blood revealing how He made the lame to walk again and it caused the blind to see. wants to give your life to Jesus before we go home. Anybody in the room need to get realigned, reassigned? You say, Pastor Jamie, before you go home, can you give one more, one more call? That tonight, if the Lord called you out, would you be ready to go to heaven tonight? It's one thing to shout, have miracles. We're thankful for all of that. But I could never sleep if I knew a sinner was in the room and I didn't give you a chance. Every head bowed. In the middle of victory, anybody here tonight that you say? Hallelujah. Come on up. Bring him on up. Whoever that is, come on up. Come on up. All right, man. Come on. Come on, man. Hey, bro. How you doing, man? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. thousand years from now, where will you be? You. Stay right here. A thousand What's years up? from now, where will you be? What's up? You all right? You will be in, in eternity somewhere. A thousand. Don't go thousand years from now, where will you be? A thousand years from now, where will you be? It is appointed unto man once to die after death, the judgment. There is a God, there is a devil, there is a heaven, and there is a hell. There's a heaven to gain, there is a hell to shun. A thousand years from now, where will you spend eternity? Forever and ever and ever and ever, where the worm never dies, where the fire is not quenched. Where, where if you're watching, where will you be a thousand years from tonight? Where will you be? Of eternity of eternities, eternity of eternities, where will you spend an endless time? You were created. To serve God. Hell was not meant for anybody but the devil and his angels. But the Bible says that hell enlarges itself every day because people say no. And they play with God. You look up into the sun for a certain amount of times, you'll go blind. For a certain amount of time, if you look into the sun, you'll go blind. The sun is 93 million miles away. And we think we're just going to casually walk into the presence of God. 
to the creator of the sun. No, pastor said it best. He's a holy God. And God became flesh and dwelt among us. This could be your, the last chance. This could be the last chance. Nobody. Beautiful little family. Up in Chattanooga tonight. So many people that didn't wake up this morning. God has appointed every one of us to be in this room tonight. If you're here, I don't care if you've been serving the Lord all your life. I don't care if you're a member of a church. I don't care if somebody put water on. I don't care. If you know that your sins, if there is anything in your heart, Jesus says if you harbor bitterness or unforgiveness in your heart, God says, I won't even forgive you. You won't forgive your brother? I won't forgive you. I'm not going to hell for nothing or nobody. I'm not going to hell. I lay it all tonight. And I'll serve him as long as I live. I'll give him everything I've got. Because I want to see him. Yes, I'll miss hell, absolutely. But I want to see Jesus because he died. I want to see him because he's my savior. I want to spend eternity with him. Everybody lift your hands. Some of you guys, come on, gather around these brothers right here. This young man right here needs, there you go. Just gather around these guys. We're going to get it right. You, you don't have to be in the altar. You can be in the room and get it right. Everybody lift your hands as high as you can get them. Pray this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you tonight broken, a sinner that needs a Savior. I ask you to help me come into my life, change me, turn me around. I realize that I need a Savior. I understand that I have to have you in my life. I'm not promised tomorrow, and I'm only here right now. Jesus, I confess my sins. Your word says that if I confess my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, change me, redeem me, wash my soul. In the name of Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior by faith and by prayer. Now pray this, Satan, you no longer have a hold on my life. The blood of Jesus is applied, and you can't touch me. You can't catch me, and you can't destroy me. I no longer serve you. I serve Jesus Christ, my Savior. And tonight, in Cleveland, Tennessee, I declare, and I decree, and I announce, that I am saved, I am saved, I am saved. Now give the Lord a praise, come on. It's just that easy. It's just that simple. It's just that easy. If you receive the Lord as your Savior, maybe the first time or you read, rededicated, just wave at me, who's that in the room? Right there, in the back, right here, yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, all right, that's enough for me, amen. So they're having a party in heaven, we ought to have a party right here. Somebody make a radical noise. Amen. Love on him some, love on him some, love on him some. Well, praise the Lord. Woo! Tony, I have a word for you. 
120 days from this night, God will blow your mind with finances and a more than enough anointing. For he's going to sing you kings with plenty. You won't have to worry another night, another breath, another moment. You will not struggle. It will not be tug of war between yes and no. But God is going to blow your mind. Now, I say that, I say that because that is the preliminary word for you tonight. The word word for you tonight as I see satellite dishes and I see, I see the mountains of Tennessee being the platform of projection of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I see it on a level that is worldwide and out of that cove and out of that, out of that mountain region. I just see all the mountains up in the East Tennessee area and what you're building God says, I am pleased with what you're building. The design is me, but you haven't seen what I'm going to do through it, from it, and by it. There's a revival coming through that vision. Through that vision. Through that vision. There will be many souls. There will be many miracles. I see the nations of the earth watching and viewing and even asking this question where in the world is Johnson City because the impact will be so powerful that it'll put that little community on the map in the in the ow oh, oh shit na 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 my city hey. miracles somebody holler miracles from the mountain hallelujah hallelujah I've already announced it tonight, today. We're sowing $10,000 into your ministry. Tonight, we're going to give you a $10,000 check that goes toward whatever you want to do with it. I don't care what you do with it. It all goes to the building of the kingdom. All right? We love you so much. We love you and your family, and we believe in everything. We're just honored to be a part of Remi Revival Makers. Yeah. Who's in Revival in Cleveland, Tennessee? Is anybody? Is anybody? Is anybody? Well, hallelujah. Well, what a mighty, 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 mighty day. This is going to be an explosive week for you as you enter into uh, the third month of March. I, I'm at Lake Forest this week, right? I'm at Lake Forest Elementary School or Middle School. What day is that? Friday? Y'all pray for me. I'm intimidated by those students now. Y'all, I can preach to the masses, but then I got to go to the local school. Y'all pray for me. I get to preach in the middle school this coming Friday morning. I'm believing for a revival in our public school system here. Rain in the valley. Somebody holler, rain in the valley. It's going to be mighty. Lift your hands as high as you can. Father, I bless your people. I thank you, God, that they're the head, not the tail. Above only, not beneath. They go over. They do not go under. Anywhere their feet take them this week, they don't just walk through. They possess the land. For they are blessed beyond imagination. They walk in the more than enough anointing. They are empowered in the Holy Ghost. And favor chases them and catches them in all their ways. Bless their home, bless their houses, family, lands, children, and children's children's children, Lord, that they walk in the abundance of the blessings of heaven. We go now in the power of the Holy Ghost, favored in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Somebody holler, amen. God bless you. God bless you.